Okay, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Paymo here. Uh, as promised, I said that I was going to show you another video for the E36 BMW. So, today's the day we're going to change the lower wishbones or the lower control arms on my BMW E36. Uh, we've got a bit of knocking from the suspension and it's the only part I think that I've not changed on this car as of yet. Uh, I've done the anti-roll bar, I've done the anti-roll bar bushes, I've done the back lollipop bushes. Uh, which are a bit more interesting, we'll get to see them in a second. So we're going to do the wishbone today and hopefully we can make a nice simple video for you. So first things first guys, as always, jack the car up and get nice and safe on axle stands. Uh, and I'm going to make the job a bit easier by taking the wheel off. You don't have to take the wheel off because you can get access in behind it, but it's a bit awkward. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to whip the wheel off right now and see how we get on. So. Okay, so at this point we go in and we remove the 22mm nut on the top of the inner ball joint on the wishbone. Okay guys, so there's a 22mm nut that I've removed. What I've done there is I've just cracked it with the 22mm spanner and then use uh, an old pair of adjustable pliers. I'm an old Honda guy, if you've ever owned a Honda you'll have a pair of these kicking about probably. Open them up and then get them in there, get them around the nut and you can just wind the nut off nice and easily. So at this point I've now got the inner ball joint loose. I need to remove the nut on the inner, the outer ball joint and remove the lollipop bush. So what I'll do first of all is I'll just crack the nut on the inner, the outer ball joint, which on my car is a 19mm nut, but that may vary because I had a problem once before and that nut's been changed. So you need to check the size of your nut on top of your, your outer ball joint. And then I believe we've got 18mm bolts that hold the lollipop bush in up there. So we'll do that and we'll crack on. Okay guys, so we've got the lollipop undone, I've got the nut pretty much completely off of the, the outside ball joint um, but I've left it just slightly on there because when you remove the nut you can't quite take it out for the shock absorber above it, it sort of blocks your, your area. Um, if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know I normally go about this by beating on it with a hammer. Now, when you beat on something like this to remove a ball joint, normally, I don't know if we can get a little shot in there, You'd be knocking on the actual arm that the ball joint sits in, which is this heavy metal part in here, the part made of iron. If you look down at the inner ball joint, this is put into a pressed steel arm. And the first time I ever took one of these off, I was a bit confused because I wasn't sure how to go about taking that off. What I'll do here is I'll remove the outer ball joint first. So that the only thing holding the arm on is the inner ball joint. That puts weight on the inner ball joint. And then I'm actually going to attack the arm in this case, which is a bit unusual. Hopefully that will free this ball joint up. It's done it before for me, so I shouldn't think I'll have any problem with it, but we'll give it a little try and we'll see how we get on. So, we we'll start off with the smaller hammer first of all. I'll just get my head in here. Okay, right, and as if by magic, I've been hitting here, and this ball joint has come off. Okay, so you can see the shock in the arm is enough to remove the ball joint, even from the inside without even hitting it in this case. I'm quite amazed by that, but sometimes these things do surprise you. So I'll carry on with the outer ball joint now, that it's loose, and now we can see it nice and clearly. There we go. She's out. So there's one old nasty arm, and we'll collect up the nut that we've dropped there in a few moments. Okay guys, so we're pretty much ready now to start having a look at things. Okay guys, so here's my arm. Um, it wasn't in that bad a shape, but it's something that I've never changed before. And although it's not that bad, this ball joint is fairly loose, as you can see. And this one on the outside is your typical floating E36 ball joint. Now if you look in there, it's got a completely split boot. So there's dirt getting in there as well as rubbish from the road. So uh, we're doing the right thing by changing this out anyway. Crafty eyed ones will notice that on this car I've got the eccentric bushes in. And this gives a little bit extra caster and allows a bit of extra roll on the car. And also, if you look very carefully in here, I've actually got a little spacer plate that sits in behind the shock absorber to give me a little bit of extra camber on this car. It's my road car, guys, but I still enjoy driving it, so I've done a couple of little things just to give me a little bit of feel in driving the car. Right guys, so at this point we're ready to put the other arm on but we need to swap this lollipop bush over. So I'm going to go into the garage now and get this lollipop bush off. We'll put it onto the new arm and then I'll uh, come and we'll stick it on at the car. Okay guys, right, so we're in the garage now. Um, 
this bush is not as hard as it looks to remove to be honest it's it's a little bit easier uh, there's a couple of different ways you could go about it but i think the easiest way i've found is a bench vise and a wooden or a rubber mallet i prefer a wooden one because it's a bit more solid so um i'll show you how we go about doing that but first of all i will say there's going to be loads of people out there that say use a bearing pull or something like this against the end of the arm I don't mind using these, but I don't like the way they wobble around and unless you buy an expensive one, which I've not done because I'm tight, um, they're a bit difficult to actually manhandle and use. I also think with a bush like this, because you're clasping with one of these bearing pulls around the outside of it, you're pulling a lot on the rubber and I worry sometimes about damaging that. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be hitting it with a rubber mallet, a uh, wooden mallet, sorry, at the top here. I'm going to be holding the bottom of the lollipop with my hand. So. Before I start doing this, I've taken a little bit of whatever proprietary maintenance spray, spray you want to use, WD-40, PV Blaster if you're in the US. Just pop a little bit in on the pin itself. Let it sit for a few minutes. I've actually tried this on the first side you saw me working on just to make sure that my, my principles are correct. I've done it before, but I wanted to remind myself first before I went ahead and did it. Um, it gets a bit violent, it's going to make a lot of noise, but we should start it moving fairly quickly. And once it gets moving, it comes off a lot easier. So I'll get in there now and we'll try and go for it. So I've got a hold of the bottom of the lollipop. Right, it's just started to move. Now it starts to spin. So once it gets to this point, you can just work it off of the arm. Voila, one lollipop bush off. Something to note guys is you don't want WD-40 in there when you put this thing back on. So take yourself a rag, get right in there and clean out any of the, the lubricant you've put in there. I believe that these things shouldn't really be lubed inside because they're rubber in there. They want to be clasped quite strongly around the arm. So we'll clean this off and then I'll go and grab the other arm and get ready to put it on. Okay guys, so we've got the other arm in here. Now before I start putting the lollipop on this one, you may notice that these are ever so slightly different. On the left here is the E36 arm. I'll just move that out of the way. And on the right is an E30 arm. Now, for all intents and purposes, these are pretty much exactly the same dimensions. I'll just lay them like that so you can get an eyeball on it. Okay, if I place one on top of the other, Everything is in exactly the same place. The only difference is this outer ball joint. Now on an E30 arm, this is a standard old fashioned ball joint, which presses by friction directly into the arm. Whereas on an E36, you've got what I believe is called a floating ball joint with this metal plate on the outside of it. This is kind of like a clip that holds the ball joint in. Now these can rust and fail. So I don't really like this as much. I prefer the older design. It's down to conjecture what you want to use, guys, but I think this was nice and cheap, didn't cost me too much money. It's exactly the same dimensions, so although I will have to do a bit of tracking and alignment after I've done all this job, it shouldn't be too dramatic. And in the future, if I ever want to change the ball joint, it's a lot easier to change one of these ball joints than it is to change one of those ball joints. So we'll go ahead now, hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea why these things look slightly different. And now we're going to pop the lollipop back on the end of this arm. So the first thing I'm going to do is pop it back in the vise, but protect it this time. We don't want the rust getting to it as soon as it goes in the car. So I'll put a little cloth in place there. Get it nice and tight in the vise. Right, now we said we don't want lubricant on here, but we do want something to help the, the lollipop go back on. And what we absolutely must do is make sure the lollipop is the right way around. So you might notice in the lollipop that it's got two countersunk holes on one side and two flush holes on the other side. The flush holes have to go on the outside of the lollipop. So when you bolt it into the car, the bolt heads are gonna sit on this side and there's two locating dowels on the chassis that will sit in these pockets. Okay guys, so before we put it on, we wanna make sure we get it in the right orientation. So the easiest way to remember how it goes on is the lollipop points the same way as the bottom of the arm. Okay, you see that? So you form a kind of like a U shape almost. If you put it on that way, you're gonna be in trouble. And if you put it on this way, you're going to be in trouble. So what we need to do is make sure our pockets are facing the same direction as the ball joint pins. And that the ball joints, uh, sorry, the lollipop's facing the inside of the car. What we're going to use here, if I just lean over at the frame here, I've got a little bit of dishwash detergent. Fairy, liquid. 
If you live in the UK, you'll know what that is. If you live in America, you might not do. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you use, guys. But this will dry out nice and quickly once it's gone on the car. I'm going to take a tiny little bit of that and just smother it all over the pin and then dry my hand off. And that will make it a lot easier to get this thing on when we start. So what we want to do is we want to line the lollipop up with the arm. And then we want to start it off, get it nice and tight in the vise. With a couple of taps from the mallet again. And then what we'll do is we'll use a, a larger socket on the metal collar. As with all these sort of things guys, you don't want to go too far wide. If I get the camera in here, you see this is a 21mm five point, sorry, six point socket. It fits perfectly around the outside of the collar there. And it will allow the pin to go into the middle of the socket. So if I start tapping this down now, you'll notice a change in sound when it's all the way home. What will happen is it will get to a certain point and then the sound will change and you know that you're there. So if I keep tapping now. There you go. You get that duller sound and you know then that that's all the way home. It's mated up with the inside of the arm. Okay guys, so that's as easy as that. There's nothing to it really. We'll then take this out of the vise. We'll give the end of the pin a bit of a wipe even though it shouldn't really need it. And you can see that it's all completely assembled and ready to go back on the car. So we'll go back out and we'll chuck it on the car. Right guys, so we're back at the car. Ignore the big light, we've got a bit of trouble with the background lighting here. So the first thing we're going to do is pop the bottom ball joint in and just get the nut on. Not like that. And notice that I'm having to hold it just a little bit lower than it needs to be finally to get the nut on it at first. We'll get it on a few threads and then we'll push it up into the arm and go right up to the nylon. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing the, the whole disc out of the way, so I'll just move the light for a second. Right, so that goes back in position like so. Right, so the important thing to remember here guys is as you put everything back together, the anti-roll bar roll joint wants to go into the arm. If you bolt everything up, you're not going to be getting that back on again. So we'll put the inner ball joint in and the anti-roll bar ball joint together, or the anti-roll bar bush. And then we'll get the nut and the washer on the anti-roll bar bush. And that's going to hold everything up. Okay. We'll just crank him with the gun. There we go. Okay, so we're going to get the lollipop back in there. You can see here clearly these two collars that I was talking about before. They need to locate in the back of the lollipop. So we want to make sure we get them located first. And then we pop in our screws bolts, whatever you want to call them, if they've got thread all the way up, they're commonly known as a screw. Right, at this point I'm going to put the nut on the top of the ball joint itself. Now, I don't know what it's like for you American guys with left hand drive, but with the right hand drive car, even though we've got the steering column in here, we can still get our hand in quite easily and put the nut on. So I'll wind that on by hand initially. Okay, right and at this point I'll tighten up the nut on the top of the outer ball joint. So this is the usual sort of stuff guys, you want to put a bit of force on the arm to hold the arm up and then you want to just tighten up your nut. So what I'm going to do here, usually I think I will be able to do this with just my knee. And it's a slow process guys being a nylon nut, so you're just going to wind it in. You don't have any clearance for a ratchet in there unfortunately, so... Okay guys, so we've got the ratchet on the inner ball joint now. With this one, we can actually see it from above on a, on a UK car. So I'm just cranking this in now. And we'll go all the way. And with my lovely King Dick ratchet from the 1960s, it's nice and short and it's made of aluminium. So it's a beautiful little ratchet. Even though it's not got many, many teeth in the ratchet, it's great for getting in small holes like this so I don't have to remove things like the anti roll bar like you might have seen in other videos. So we're pretty much there. Now because of the length of this ratchet I will take it off and I'll put my 22mm spanner back on. And 
I'd say that's pretty much job done. We can put the wheel back on now guys, take everything out of the way and that's a nice job finished. It's much easier than it looks guys, it's a piece of cake this job. Don't be afraid to give it a try yourself and go for it. Keep your eyes out for the next video, hopefully we're going to have some more stuff to do with the E36 coming, some more stuff to do with the FTO coming and the track car is nearly going to have its engine put in, we're hoping to do that video in a couple of weeks time. Thanks for watching guys, if you've got any questions stick them down in the comments below, like, subscribe, tell your friends and hopefully I can help you out with any other bits and bobs with the E36 BMW. Pay more out.